Hi everyone, I'm Denise O'Malley, the founder of You Define Wellness, and welcome to another session within the Defining Wellness Confab. So if you've been following along, you know that I'm introducing you in 48 presentations to health and wellness experts out there. And the reason for it is, is our theme is becoming the director of your own healthcare. And when you're stepping out from the traditional world of medical insurance and finding your own path around, it's hard to know who to turn to. So you know what, I'm introducing you to the people that you can connect with and see if you learn from them and then see if you wanna work with them. So this presentation is different than any of the other ones that we are doing within the CONFAB. And I wanna introduce you to you to find wellness provider and my friend Sherry Wagner with Ironclad Fitness and we're going to talk about confidence muscles and five steps to find your strength and Sherry thank you for doing this with us today well thank you so much for having me I'm, I'm really thrilled to be part of this panel and um, you know just all of the hard work that you've put into you to find wellness it's you know it's it's a pleasure to be here and I am, thank you for that, and I am turning it over to you now. Okay. So as Denise mentioned, I am going to be talking about strength training and telling you all of the benefits that you can gain from doing a strength training program and some ways that you might not necessarily know about. And also I'm gonna share some ways to really get the most out of your workout. So you get a lot of bang for your buck in a short amount of time and just some tips and tricks that way too. So I'm gonna share my screen here and I am going to start with, once I get this set up, um, a little story. So um, my story. <laughs> so once upon a time, I was a very awkward, clumsy, little girl. <laughs> um, I was very weak and I had horrible posture, which you can see right here. <laughs> um, I, this picture is like, it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> all at the same time, but it's such a good depiction of, you know, what I, like, I feel like it really shows the poor posture, the, I was obviously clumsy and I was weak and awkward too. Um, I never did anything athletic. I was that girl picked last in gym class when they did the whole team thing. You know, I went this one, I went that one. And then in my 20s, I started to dabble a little bit in strength training. I had like an interest in it. And it was more just because I should. But, um, you know, I would, I would be that three-month person. Like at the three-month mark, I was out of there. I was bored or I was injured or both. And that continued pretty much well into my 20s. And, um, and then when I was about 30 something, <laughs> early thirties, I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. I had started to gain a bunch of weight and, you know, things just weren't the way they should be. And being diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome that followed with a diagnosis of osteopenia, which is low bone density. I like to say bone density low enough to give it a name but it does put you at a much higher risk for osteoporosis, and I have a family history of that. I also was developing neck, back, and knee pain, and this is what I looked like in 2000. So shortly after this picture was taken, I lost weight through basically just diet, continued my pattern of on again, off again, getting injured at the three-month mark, getting bored at the three-month mark, all of that, and you know, it just, it just kept going that way. And then one day I had this random yet fateful conversation with a neighbor and that's how I learned about kettlebells. And when I started training with kettlebells, my whole world changed. And I, I mean that like really sincerely and literally, I'm not, it's just not just like me exaggerating. Um, I became strong for the very first time. I, learned that I could be an athlete. I learned that there are no limits to what I can do if, if I have the mindset and the training and the, the program to help me get there. And I started doing things that if you had told me in my 20s that someday I'd be on a rock climbing wall at a Ninja Warrior event <laughs> in Denver, I would have thought you were crazy. Um, I actually went rock climbing outside too. I did a triathlon. I did like a whole bunch of things that I never thought I would ever do. So 
kettlebells taught me that I could really be an athlete. And I believe that I had it in me all along. I just needed a coach who could really show me how to be that. And, you know, like I said, I just, I got strong. Like I had never been. What started out as like an aesthetic goal and because I should became so much more. It became about the skill and like being good at something physical for the first time ever. Okay, so now let's get into all the benefits of strength training. So I first want to start by telling all of the listeners out there that you are stronger than you give yourself credit for. I believe that so wholeheartedly because I've seen it for myself, with myself, and I've seen it with so many people that I've worked with. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times a day or a week that I say that to somebody. And I really, really do believe it. So um, strength training benefits. Well, I love this picture. Um, you are never too old and it is never too late to get started. This person, her name is Ernestine Shepard. She is an inspiration to me. Um, in this picture, she was 70. So this was her very first bodybuilding competition at the age of 70. She started at the age of 56. When I started with my kettlebell journey, I was 38. I got certified at 40. So, you know, just please remember that you are never too old and it is never too late. So, and, and hopefully this helps empower you because that is one of the benefits of strength training. Now for the ladies out there, a lot of ladies <laughs> think that um, they hear lift heavy weights or they hear strength training and they think this is going to happen. Well, I'm here to tell you those results are not typical. Um, most women do not have the hormonal makeup to make this happen to their bodies. Um, this takes years and years and years of very specific training and nutrition and oftentimes outside forces if you catch my drift <laughs> because women just don't have enough testosterone to get big like that. So this will not happen to you. However, one of the big benefits of strength training is that you do build muscle. Not like what we just showed you necessarily, <laughs> but um, muscle is really sort of the overarching thing of everything that comes below this on the list. So you can't build muscle without strength training, or you can't build muscle in this, to the same extent from other exercises as you can with strength training. So one of the biggest benefits, um, at least for me, was increasing bone density. So I told you I was diagnosed with osteopenia. Well, I have pretty much reversed the osteopenia. In, in my spine, it is gone. Um, I still have it in my hip, but it has not changed. Like that number has not changed. It hasn't progressed at all. So you increase your bone density by having muscle on your frame, but also the actual lifting of the weights is what helps you increase your bone density. So they used to always say walking, you know, weight bearing exercises like walking was the thing to do. And they're really sort of realizing that that has a very small return on your investment. And holding weights, literally holding a weight, the resistance that your bones give when you're holding that weight is what makes your bones get stronger. They also say you can't reverse low bone density, but I'm living proof that you can, and I know others who have as well. So another benefit of strength training and building muscle is all of your metabolic processes in your body just work better. It's like the fires burn hotter, sort of. And metabolic processes, things like hormones, your carbohydrate tolerance, your blood sugar regulation, A1C, um, thyroid, like so many different bodily functions all fall under that umbrella of metabolic processes. And strength training has been shown to help all of them. Um, doctors often prescribe strength training for people who are diabetic and pre-diabetic because it has such a big impact and it can lower your A1C. Strength training has also been shown to be the fountain of youth. So that is in the release of HGH, which is human growth hormone. So as you saw in that picture I shared of Ernestine Shepard, I mean, my God, she was 70 in that picture. I don't think she looked like it at all. And pretty much everybody I know who is 
doing regular strength training does not look their age, and they certainly don't feel their age either. You move and perform and function so much better when you have muscle on your frame. Um, Jack LaLanne is another really great example of somebody who, you know, certainly had the fountain of youth from his exercise. Um, less joint pain is another benefit. So your muscles support your bones and your joints. So when you don't have a lot of muscle on your frame or they're not strong and not functional and like not working well, your joints have to kind of do everything. They're not supported by those muscles like they should be. So you support the joints and the bones with the muscle and your joint pain can diminish. I've seen it a quite a lot with um, back pain, neck pain, and knee pain, which I've had all three of those. Um, those tend to be just sort of the three common areas that I tend to see. And you know, my back, neck, and knee pain has kind of completely fallen by the wayside. And I see it a lot with the people that I work with as well. So you also become more self-sufficient. When you're strong, you can lift heavy bags of groceries, heavy boxes, help your friends move furniture, um, you know, so many different things that you can do when you're strong. And that self-sufficiency is very empowering too. So then also better posture. So I just naturally stand so much straighter than I used to. You saw in that picture when I was 12, you know, granted I was 12, but still, <laughs> I was very rounded. I have a picture from my 20s too, when I was really rounded in my shoulders. And I'm gonna go into more of the details of this later, but there are some specific muscles that really help you stand with better posture, but strength training in general can, can do that. Again, it's the muscles supporting the, joint, the frame, you know, your, your bones and your joints. Strength training is also really great for your mind. So heavy weightlifting or interval training has been shown to trigger the greatest endorphin response of any type of exercise. So the endorphins are the chemicals in your brain that make you feel really good after you work out. And hopefully the people watching have experienced that at some point in your life. Um, the endorphins are also um, things like serotonin and dopamine. Those regulate your mood and you know, just how your brain functions. So that's sort of the next one on the list here that strength training has been shown to be an effective treatment for mild to moderate depression and anxiety. And I really feel that myself personally. So I have depression and anxiety and I use my workouts as, um, I don't necessarily wanna say a coping mechanism, but kind of a coping mechanism. Um, I feel so much better after I train. You know, if I'm, if I'm down one day, if I go and train, I know I'm gonna get that endorphin release and I know that the dopamine and serotonin are gonna be kicking and doing their thing and sure enough, it works. And doctors are also starting to prescribe that along with antidepressants as you know, a real symbiotic kind of approach to dealing with mental health issues. So even briefly exercising for 20 minutes facilitates learning and memory functions. And I'm gonna talk more about that as we go. Like I said, um, you know, lots of ways to get bang for your buck. So I'm gonna show you how you can get a really great workout in 20 minutes, but it helps facilitate learning and memory functions. So there's your brain again and your mind. So activities with both physical and mental demands have a higher impact on cognitive functioning. So the physical demand is pretty obvious when we're talking about exercise of any kind. Um, but the mental demand comes typically more with strength training than with other types of exercise. Because when you are lifting weights, you have to be really mindful of what you're doing so that you don't hurt yourself, right? So think about if you've ever been on a treadmill at the gym, like watching TV as you're walking or spinning or you know, on the elliptical or anything. You're not necessarily mentally engaged in what you're doing. You're kind of mentally engaged in the TV that you're watching. So you don't necessarily get that mental demand along with the physical demand. And there's actually been studies that show that you don't actually get as much physical demand that way. So, um, so you get a big, better cognitive function out of it when you are mindful in what you're doing. And strength training sort of requires that. And then the um, empowerment and accomplishment 
that can help increase your self-esteem as well. And I really challenge anybody out there to lift a heavy weight, like your personal best of heavy in any exercise and not feel accomplished and empowered. Like it just, it doesn't happen any other way. You feel like you can conquer the world. So um, yeah, and, and that's, that was one of the things that really was appealing to me when I got into this. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the self-care aspect of exercise. First, I wanna start by saying self-care is not selfish. So, you know, you always hear about the oxygen mask theory. Take care of yourself so you can take care of other people. Well, you don't actually have to do that. <laughs> you can take care of yourself for you. It's okay. Um, you don't have to do it with the intent of helping others. That's sort of the side effect that comes with it no matter what, but you deserve it for you. So I'm super passionate about that, that you don't have to participate in acts of self-care for anyone other than you. You deserve to perform at your best, to feel your best, to look your best, to function your best. Okay, but I think that exercise and good nutrition are the ultimate expressions of self-care. And the reason why I believe that is if you think about like a manicure or a massage or you know any other kind of treatment like that, your results last for up to weeks, let's say. In the case of like a manicure, it's gonna last for weeks. You do it once and it lasts for weeks. Well, with exercise, unfortunately, believe me, I wish it was not this way, but with exercise, you exercise once and it doesn't last for weeks. You have to keep doing it over and over again. You have to keep making that conscious choice to put yourself first in order to get the result that you desire from it. And the same go goes for, for nutrition and your meals. You can't eat just one good meal and be good for the rest of your life. You have to keep doing it over and over again. So that's why I feel that they are the ultimate expression of self-care. You're showing up for yourself every single time that you do it. Okay, so how to get the most out of your workouts. Well, the first thing is compound movements. So compound movements are multi-joint, multi-muscle exercises. So if you think about a bicep curl, I don't know if you can see my arm here, but a bicep curl, you're bending one joint, your elbow, and one muscle, your bicep. A compound movement is something like a squat where you're bending at the hip, the knee, and the ankle, and you're using all of the muscles of your lower body. So, Compound movements, because you're using so many muscles and so many joints, they give you a lot of bang for your buck. I'm not knocking isolation exercises. They have their place. But if you're looking for a time-efficient type of workout, you want to incorporate compound movements. So then there's four keys to those compound movements, and that's the next point here, is upper body push, upper body pull, lower body push, and lower body pull. So an upper body push is something like a push-up or an overhead press. Um, an upper body pull is something like a rowing mechanism or a pull-up. Lower body push is a squat or a lunge. Lower body pull is something like a deadlift. So just giving you four examples there. Um, those four, the, all of those exercises I mentioned are all compound movements, and you're getting upper and lower in a pushing and a pulling so you are getting front, back, inside, out, up and down, all over. And then HIIT training is the last key to this. So high intensity interval training. Um, a friend of mine said it's lifting weights faster. And I don't literally mean like you're going really fast, like you're not moving really fast, but you are in a way. <laughs> so let's just say you take those four exercises, your upper push and pull, your lower push and pull, and you put them into a circuit of either a timed work and rest or a certain number of repetitions of each and you cycle through each with a little bit of rest in between, that's high intensity interval training. It's a period of work followed by a period of rest. So you're moving efficiently and somewhat quickly through a series of exercises and you do 20 minutes of HIIT with weights, with compound movements, and you're gonna get your cardio covered while you're getting your strength covered. So it's super efficient that way. And that's one of the things that I really, really love about it. 
Okay, so some ways to sneak in exercise. You can break it up throughout the day. You do not have to put a block of like an hour or more for your exercise. You can do five, 10, 15 minutes. You can do that just in and of itself, or you can do some in the morning, some at lunch maybe, some in the evening. However it works to fit into your schedule is truly just fine. Um, you just don't have to allow that full block of time if you can't. So five, 10, 15 minutes is always better than not doing it at all, right? So chair squats, this is another way. I love chair squats and desk push-ups for those of you that are working office jobs or just sitting at a desk all day for you, whatever you, it is that you do. So chair squats, basically sitting down into a chair is doing a squat. So you sit down in your chair and you stand up and then you sit and you stand and you sit and you stand. Um, make it a little more challenging by standing a little in front of your chair and just barely tap your butt to the chair. And there you have it. You can, you know, if you do that, let's say every single time that you get up from your desk, you're going to sneak in potentially 100 or more squats every single day that you do that. And you can do the same thing with desk push-ups. Now, if you work in an office environment where you can get down on the floor and do push-ups, do that. But if you don't, you can just lean on your desk with your hands, put yourself in a plank position, and do your push-ups that way. And that's also actually a regression for people who, um, who aren't able to do a full push-up on the floor. So that serves two purposes there. And then you always have to make the time. You won't find it. Um, you've heard this in other ways, you know, other, other aspects of life, right? So schedule your workouts just the way that you would any other appointment that you value. Um, you know, a doctor's appointment, you're going to have that scheduled. You can't just show up or you can't just like find the time to do it. <laughs> so do the same with your workouts. Honor yourself that way. That's that self-care piece again. So honor yourself in that way and make the time. Schedule it in and don't break your appointment with yourself. If a doctor's appointment is important enough to you that you're not going to cancel at the last minute, well, you putting you first is potentially going to um, negate the need to go to the doctor. <laughs> but for so many reasons, it's, you know, you honoring yourself in that way. Okay, so how to be your most confident self. And what are those confidence muscles that we talked about in the title of this anyway? Well, that's a little term that I coined for the lat muscles in your back. So these are gigantic triangular muscles that take up most of your back. They are one of the largest muscles in your entire body, definitely the largest in your back. They connect essentially your shoulders to your butt. And what they do when those muscles back there are strong, they help pull your shoulders back and help you stand straighter and taller. And they have a lot of functions. They help stabilize your shoulder. They can help prevent back pain. You know, they just help make your whole body more functional. And for people who work a desk job, um, oftentimes that forward posture that we get stuck into, well, those lat muscles help kind of pull you out of that. And they can actually help lengthen the pec muscles in the front too. Um, and really it's the whole posterior chain, not just the lat muscles, but everything that comes below it as well. So your butt, your hamstrings, your calves, all of those muscles are some of the biggest in your body that help hold you upright and give you good posture. And, you know, like when some of those muscles are just really strong, you just feel better and you feel more confident that way. And then we can't forget the abdominals as well. So this is in the anterior chain of your body on the front. Um, they help support your back as well but they are not the only contributor. It's really all of these muscles put together that help you stand your tallest. When your abdominals are strong, usually people feel really good about themselves when they have that strong, tight abdominal wall. Um, and, you know, posture, feeling good, performing better, all of that contributes to this. And that is how you become your most confident self. So I want to just end with two quick things. One, to repeat, you are stronger than you give yourself credit for. So get out there and lift some weights and find out. <laughs> and then also an offer. So this offer is just for people watching this confab. So I am giving $50 off your first month that is good for either unlimited classes here at Ironclad Fitness in Southeast Denver, 
or for my online personal training program. And you must mention that you saw it here because, well, really I don't have it anywhere else, <laughs> so there is nowhere else you could see it, but um, please do mention so that I know. Um, and this expires on October 31st. Awesome, what a generous offer. Thanks. That's fantastic. So can I hit you with some questions? Absolutely. Okay, so um, you obviously are working with people one-on-one -on -one at your facility, your studio in, uh, it's a Denver address, isn't it? Denver, Colorado, yep. Southeast Denver. But you also have this online personal training, so you can work with anyone anywhere in the world. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. I didn't know that. So that's fantastic. Oh, technology. <laughs> I know. I know. We're all harnessing that, and it's a fantastic thing that you have. And then one of the things I had a question of are these unlimited, these classes. So these are with groups? Yeah, so I do small group training. Mm -hmm. So it has a very personalized aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because I really believe in good technique. And yeah. teaching. I teach a very specific style of kettlebell training and it is steeped in a very particular technique. Mm -hmm. And I give my best to my clients when there's fewer of them, basically. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it puts people in the safest environment possible, basically. So 10 people or less is what you'll find in my classes. So it's like small group personal training, basically. So for the person who would be um, thinking, and I'm going to close your screen real quick so we can just you and I talking here. Um, so for the person who is like, wow, this, this sounds really good. I really want to work with you. But... Um, and forgive my dog barking, um, it, but, but you know, this, they really haven't been doing anything for themselves and they're a little intimidated about going and they're going to be in a group with a whole bunch of other people. So how do you get over that? Um, oh, that's a really good question. That's, that's such an individual thing, really. I mean, I try my best to make people feel comfortable here mm -hmm. and you know, all of my clients are just super friendly and welcoming. And, you know, I feel like I have, you can't see it here, but, you know, I have like a big, sunny, fun, energetic mural on the wall. And, you know, just the whole, the whole place, I think, just exudes like, come on in. <laughs> um, so I try my best to really make people feel welcomed and not intimidated. Um, but, you know, in terms of someone who just has those feelings and needs to get past those feelings, um, gosh, sometimes it's just like ripping off the Band-Aid and just yeah. trying it and seeing that, oh, okay, this wasn't actually intimidating yet once I got here. Yeah. And that is really one of the common things that I hear from a lot of people that I work with is, you know, God, I was so intimidated and I don't know why because I had no reason to be. Or, you know, you've made it so welcoming. You've made it such a safe place for me to be. Oh, that's awesome. So have you ever had anybody come to you and say, you know, I would feel more comfortable if I could bring together my friends and families or coworkers and set up a group for us? Have you ever done that before? Um, I haven't just because I haven't had the people that have wanted that. But yes, I would do it. Um, you know, it's considered personal training, but, um, you know, it's a group, your, your own small group, personal training, basically. Um, so yes, I, I definitely have that as an offering if somebody wanted that. Um, you know, usually it, it doesn't work out that way because people realize that, oh, I can just bring my friend with me and participate in the classes that are already here because it is welcoming and not intimidating. But if that's yeah. like someone's safety zone, then by all means, yeah, we'll do it. You know, and the reason why I'm saying that is I actually have a couple of people in mind that I know that are health and wellness, um, in the health and wellness industry, not necessarily taking care of themselves as well as they should. They have a desire to do it, but they're almost embarrassed to go, and, especially if anybody ever hears what the industry is that they're in, and they're not, they're not the epitome of health and wellness. Yeah. And I think that they would love to come together and do it together because they're all in the same boat. Yeah. So there's about a half a dozen people I actually have in mind that might be willing to do that. So we're going to have to talk about that. Yeah, we can definitely know you're open to it. together for that. That is awesome. Yeah. So at this point in time, this is where I get to talk to you about Sherry Bean and the Udefine Wellness Network and what that means. And my screen is catching up. There we are. And 
you know, we're, we've been around now for about three and a half years, and a lot of people still don't know who we are, so I like to cover this part. We are a network of health and wellness professionals from across the United States, and we have um, professionals in eight or nine states right now. And when you're looking for someone, when you're taking charge of your own health care and looking for someone to go to, and you're Googling it, and the list comes up, maybe you've gone to Yelp, whatever it may be, you're going to find a list of people. But here's what's different about ours. And if you're, whether you're a client of ours or not, you can go to our provider directory at our website and access it and see the people that we have in there. And the reason why you, why you want to do it is this. What's different about us is that we actually vet our providers. What that means is, is we do a criminal background investigation. We're looking at their um, licenses that they hold and looking at disciplinary actions and stipulations against them. We are looking to make sure they're a legal business and um, what their reputation is. <clears throat> Excuse me. So while you should not use our background investigation as the sole decision in working with someone, you need to um, have your own due diligence that you do. You know it's not just a list of anybody out there. It is somebody who is actually, we've looked at and said, yes, this is someone we want to have in our network. And when we have a network, what we can do with it are some fun things, like put together an employee benefit program. Because you know what, people like Sherry, she's not on your medical insurance plan. So here's an employee benefit program where you can access her, as well as there's over 130 other types of services that are on our plan. We can put together an education catalog to come in and do corporate lunch and learns or an association meetings or school groups where you are looking for a speaker on health and wellness education. We already have a catalog of classes that have been created and you can download that catalog for free at our website. And the last thing that we can do as a products perspective is we had a lot of people come to us and say, I'm not on your employee benefit program, but man, I really wanna participate in this. So we created a discount card. It's called the Healthy Living Savings Card. It is literally a card. And when you present it to one of the providers in our network who accepts it, they will give you a discount for products and services. You can use it as many times in a month as you want. You can share it with your friends and family, your coworkers, whoever presents that card can receive those discounts. And we do have a, a one-time fee on this. It's $99. And through the end of this month, it's available for half price at $49.50. So we encourage you to take a look at that. And all you have to do is just go to our website at udefinedwellness.com and take a look at everything that we have. And the last thing I'm going to do is put up Sherry's information again. Um, she had it and, you know, you can always hit the rewind button and go back to it and see what her special offer was all about. But I encourage you to go to her website and learn more about what it is that she does and pick up the phone and call her and say, hey, I want to talk to you about maybe working together. So that being said, any final words? Um, I would just sort of add to that last thing you said and mention that I always do a free consultation with people. And you know that's, that's an offer that's out there all the time, not just for this. Um, and it is just us sitting down, having a conversation. That's all it is. We'll talk about goals and you know health history, injury history, things like that. But it is truly just like a discovery kind of obsession. And we're discovering each other in that. Um, yeah. And that's fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, and that's good. I'd like to just thank you again for inviting oh. me to be here. Well, thank you. I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate our live audience and for all of those who are watching this on a recording. And for those who are watching this on a recording, no matter where you found it, you can find more. Just go to youtube.com, put you to find wellness in the search engine, you'll find our channel. And we have the 48 sessions from the Defining Wellness Confab in there. We have a bunch more um, that we've been doing over the past two and a half years. So as you're finding your own wellness path, you can explore and get to know some of the health and wellness professionals that I know um, that are part of you to find wellness. With that being said, once again, thank you all, and we hope to see you on another recording soon.